So, evening everybody. I'm hoping that you can hear me. Um, just waiting to see and making sure that it's actually going to be live. Oh, I think it is live. Hopefully you'll be able to hear. Um, just got to check that you can actually hear me. Yes. Good. That's good. Good, good, good. So I can put that there. So, um, hi everybody. Oh, hope you're all okay. Um, let me know that you can hear me. I can hear me on my side. So I'm, um, I'm hoping that that's okay. Uh, and, uh, just going to pull this up so I can see what I'm doing there. So that's all fine. Good, good. Sounds okay. Fantastic. Um, so apologies if there's any, um, banging and stuff, uh, going on. Um, my, de my next door neighbor is doing a bit of building work. <laughs> so I'm hoping that, um, I've, I've gone out and I've said, would you mind stopping for a bit? So anyway, I'm hoping that, um, he, uh, is going to stop. So we shall see. Uh, now then what's happening here? Am I... Oh, I think my Wi-Fi has gone funny. Let me take that off and then I can actually see what's going on. I think it's my phone's going a bit weird. I like to, I, I need to be able to see the, the live chat so that I can answer some of your questions. Anyway, I hope you're all okay. Um, yeah, I've got that up there. Brilliant, brilliant. Yes, hope you're all okay. So tonight I want to just look at um, carrying on with the, uh, the forelock area here. Just bring that in a little bit there and just get a little bit more done of this forelock and get some of this colour down in here as well and then start to do the, the top of the ear. Um, so if I miss any of your questions or anything like that, Vicky, I think will we'll send me a message. Um, we are working on the dark grey pastel mat. This isn't the board that I'm using, it's just the normal pastel mat card. Um, so it's the sort of thinnish one. Um, and I'm using... These are the pencils, I've, I, I, I've listed them in the description, but these are the pencils that we're using tonight. So uh, I'm going to make a start and, you, and, and get my usual out, which is the, um, the dark sepia, um, and, um, and just make a start. Just, just crack on and get drawing. Um, so um, dark sepia, brilliant pencil, polychromos dark sepia. It's the pencil that I tend to start every single one of my pieces with um it's just it's very neutral it's quite a yeah it's sort of i don't know you can use it as a as an alternative to black you can use it as a gray you can use it as a tint it's just a really really good um pencil uh, and, and i tend to use it for everything basically um so i like to get, kind of get my darks in uh, very early on so when i'm building a forelock up that's what I um, I'll tend to go in and get a lot of my darks in first so that I can build things like shadows and all of that type of stuff in. Now, if you were looking for an alternative to um, the, the dark sepia, if you haven't got one, go for sort of like a warm grey, um, you know, dark, warm grey. Um, I'm not sure there are alternatives or you could use something like a, um, I was going to say a cocoa, a Pablo cocoa, but I wouldn't I wouldn't actually go with a Pablo cocoa because it that's a bit brownie. Um, so, um, uh, you know, if you haven't got a dark sepia, I would say get one uh, because they are a very, very useful pencil. Um, and um, I'm just going to come in. And of course, we're working on the pastel mats. We don't really need to worry about leaving too many of our highlights out i mean big chunky bits of highlights definitely but um you know areas where we've got sort of like white hairs coming over the top we can easily get those in with um with the white pencil afterwards uh, you know very very easily especially on the toned pastel mat it works really really well so i'm just sort of flicking this hair in here i'm using nice light pressure and oh my goodness <laughs> so i've been using um fabriano artistico the hot press fabriano artistico i've just done a big commission on it it's just gone off to be framed today and i haven't shared it because it's been a secret one um my wrist i cannot tell you how hurting my wrist is i don't think i realized you know when i talk about you know light pressure lighten up your pressure lighten up your pressure all of that type of stuff with 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 um with pastel mat i don't think i realized quite um 
how easy it is on pastel mat to really work with light pressure. Even when you work with harder pressure, it's still quite light. I've just done two black ponies on um, the Fabriano and my wrist, I've had to put, I've had to strap it up because <laughs> um, I've had to use quite hard pressure to kind of get some of those darks in there. And um, yeah, my wrist has been absolutely terrible. Uh, so I'm, I'm quite glad that I'm back onto, um, onto pastel mat, I have to say. And I'm starting my next commission tonight, which is a beautiful, beautiful grey um, with a fabulous head collar. Uh, so um, I'm yeah quite quite excited about that one. I do love uh, greys, and he's he's going to be done on um, on the white pastel mat board. Oh hi Andrea. <laughs> oh that's oh I'm so glad you managed to catch me live. That's good. Um, so yeah, so I hope everybody's okay. Hope everybody's had a good day. We've had a we've had a bit of a bit of a um, bit of a nightmare today. <laughs> well later on this afternoon, I nearly cancelled, but. Um, but didn't um we went to the dog park and had a lovely lovely time and then um nelly got into the um paddling pool so that was great <laughs> she got absolutely soaked wet through but we think that she has broken one of her toes so she got out of the paddling pool started to run around a little bit and then was hopping um and um i think one of her little toes on her one of her back paws I think it's her her left paw um i think it might be broken um so i've spoken to the vet and they've they've said just rest it and she's going to see the vets tomorrow um but poor little girl she she was having such a lovely time and then all of a sudden she can't she can't put her foot on the ground so that was all a little bit of a nightmare um which um you know i i very very nearly cancelled because i thought i was going to be sitting at the vets but they've they've, they've suggested we go in tomorrow so um hopefully she'll be okay poor little thing um but she was just loving the paddling pool uh, you know it was quite funny so i'm using here at this this little wispy bit down here i'm using the polychromo cinnamon i really really love the polychromo cinnamon i um it's one of those pencils that is a little bit um it's a magic one i, I have a few pencils that i i really do consider as magic pencils and this one um this is definitely one of them especially on the pastel mat and i don't know whether you can see i might have to zoom in a little bit but it, it goes down very very smoothly and what it will do is it will actually smooth so if you put it in over the top of other things it will smooth out the pigment um so ruth yeah this is the the cinnamon that i'm talking about now and it's a it's a great pink it's it's if i compare it to the um if I compare it to this one, this is the Granite Rose, the Pablo Granite Rose, which is an awesome pencil. That's another must have pencil. But you can see how different the pinks are. This is this one's definitely a pinky pink, but this one I class as almost like a brownie pink. Um, so it's brilliant for animal um, hair, especially for those sort of uh, chestnutty animals, you know, where you can kind of bring, you can see like little bits of pink in those chestnutty tones. And the, the um, if you combine this with uh, sort of like a brow, uh, a burnt ochre and a terracotta, those three are gonna make a really, really fantastic chestnut. Um, you know, you get sort of like a little bit of the, the sort of browniness with the, with the burnt ochre. And then you get some of that sort of, I don't know, it just lifts that orange using the, the pinky colour. So it's, um, yeah, it's a really, really good, good, good uh, pencil. And especially for the, these horses where, you know, they've got the, the, the kind of the sun-kissed ends to their, um, to their forelocks, you know, and you can kind of bring this pink in. And with the, with the pastel mat, you just, you know, you can get it in over the top of your darks and it's, oh, it's just wonderful. And having been working on the... Um, on the Fabriano all week coming on to pastel mat now it's like yeah <laughs> it's like coming home after a really long business trip <laughs> um so this this is another Pablo this is another really fantastic one this is the light gray um and you could you can all well I I love this I use this with a lot of my black animals and I use it I'll put a really really dark black in and then I'll bring the gray in over the top um and it's and it works brilliantly so i'm just going to bring a little bit of this in and get some of these highlighted bits there's a little bit of highlight on the um 
on the uh, on this bit of the forelock here so we're just going to get that in we don't really need to worry about um, tiny details or stray hairs or anything like that just yet it's just about blocking in those um, highlights and colors and all of that type of stuff and you're kind of building a building a picture of the tonal values before you start to go in with the uh, the details and it can if you're kind of new to to drawing and new to color pencils it can feel a little bit weird because you, you'd almost think that when you're drawing something like this the first thing that you pick up are the details you know and you start to kind of uh, draw those details straight away um and and actually it makes it much it makes it much easier uh, to wait and then kind of incorporate the details later on once you've got your tones and once you've got all of those things sort of added you know it's like I've just put this little bit of um, light color in here so straight away we've got a, a shadow underneath it and we've got some layering going on so straight away this even though I haven't put any detail in is starting to look like layers of hair um, and this is what's so brilliant about being able to just ignore the details for now and just plot in um, you know the the tones and the and the bits of color in there so uh, have I given up on the Hannah Muller nostalgia no um, no 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 not at all I what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make I'm trying to kind of give tutorials on different papers that uh, people have got and you know if you're if you've got a smooth paper so if you've got any sort of hot press paper any tutorial or anything like that that I do on a smooth paper, you will be able to follow exactly the same techniques on, a, you know, a different paper. Um, it's a bit tricky when I do a tutorial on pastel mat and then you try and convert that onto smooth paper because the techniques really are quite different, especially the light over dark um, and the uh, and the drafting film as well. I think my next live draw, I'm going to be doing uh, something on drafting film. Um, oh, and I'm going to use my new slice. I've been sent the new slice, the brand new slice tool as well, which I'll show you. Um, so no, definitely not not giving up on anything. I really like the nostalgia. I like how it um, it takes the layers very nicely, and I like how it doesn't. You don't get the tooth coming back at you. I found with I find with the Fabriano that especially if you're drawing dark animals on it, and I've just drawn two black ponies. Um, I find that the tooth comes back at me, uh, you know, and, and you kind of, that's why I've ended up with a sore wrist because I've really been having to battle with that tooth, which people talk about battling with the tooth with, with um, pastel mat, but it, it's not the same as battling with the tooth with, a, with a, um, a hot press, a smooth paper. So no, definitely not. I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to give all sorts of papers a go. Um, I'm going to be doing something on the new, uh, light fast paper as well uh, I've bought a big pad of it um, I'm not going to do a tutorial on the light fast paper because it's so expensive but having had a, a, a little play with it it is very very nice paper um, very nice indeed actually so I'm going to do I've got a golden retriever that I'm going to do on that which I'm quite excited about um Bonnie are you working on a beginner tutorial for this month yes I am <laughs> yeah I am um the beginner ones come a little bit later on in the month just just because I have all on to try and get everything done for the main tutorials but the beginner tutorial what I want to do is I want to talk about in depth about pencils so about um polychromos about pablos about luminance about light fast about studios um about the artists I've also got some uh polycolor lyra polycolor uh, that I want to have a look at and this month the, the 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 beginners one I want to really really talk about pencils their qualities why you choose one over the other um, you know all of that type of stuff rather than a specific drawing tutorial um, you know because actually you could you can do any of my tutorials and they're still really in depth but I thought it'd be really really good to to talk about those colored pencils and to work out you know why I would use a polychromos over a pablo or why i would use a pablo over a polychromos you know that type of thing um you know and kind of look at some of the mark making and see how they layer and um you know the the colors and all of that type of stuff so i'm working on that um in my head 
<laughs> uh, and basically I'll just I'll, I'll, pro I'll just wake up one morning and go right okay I'll do the beginners tutorial and then off I go and then the other thing that I'm working on they literally just arrived um, as I was starting this live stream is the um, uh, projectors so I have purchased two projectors um, one that is not quite a hundred pounds and one that is not quite I think it's I think it's 200 pounds I think um, and I'm gonna do a a big um, video on that and just look at them look to see whether they are going to be suitable for um, you know artists because a lot of projectors it's, it's a little bit difficult because they project too big or the lumens aren't high enough or the resolution isn't good enough all of that type of stuff so I'm gonna do a um, a review on these two projectors that I've bought um, and we'll see we'll see how we go with that so that will be a patreon tutorial as well because I know you know I projectors are they are so brilliant for saving time and all of that type of stuff and and it's a, an absolute minefield out there trying to work out you know which one works well so um yeah so I need to do that I need to do that pretty swiftly actually I may well do that tomorrow uh, you know, so that I can kind of give my verdict on that. So that's quite good. So they're just sitting in their Amazon boxes at the minute. So um, I'm hoping that they're going to be, they're going to work. Because if they don't, they're going back. <laughs> um, you know, so, uh, and they'll definitely come in useful for my um, up and coming workshops and, and retreats and everything as well. So, um, you know, if we need to be multiple people kind of, you know, projecting their image and, and creating an outline and everything like that so um ba -doo -ba -boo. just join the live stream what color is this please eric um oh sorry well i've got a few different colors that i'm using so the pink is the cinnamon polychroma cinnamon i've then got the pablo cream okay so the pablo cream uh, is very similar to the polychromos ivory I've then got the Polychromos Dark Sepia and I've got the Pablo Light Grey. Those are the ones that I'm currently using. Um, before you start a portrait, do you work with colours, pencil brands to see what works best to get the results you want and keep as a reference? That's a really good question, actually, Andrea. Um, what I tend to do when I get a portrait or when I get um, a, a photograph through from somebody and I'm about to I'm about to start a portrait. So take the one that I'm about to start, which is a is a grey Irish sports horse um, he's it, it got really beautiful colouring let me just p pull the picture up and then I can describe so he's got an iron grey forelock uh, he's got a big white blaze but the big white blaze has got some lovely lighting on it so a lot of the big white blaze is actually sort of some uh, lilac lilac -y colours then uh, kind of over his um, the eye sockets He's almost dappled over his eye sockets and round his eye sockets. And then his nose is very pink. And then kind of around the muzzly area, that's sort of like grey, lilac-y colours as well. I mean, they are really super, super colours. And then he's got a beautiful leather head collar on. So as soon as I get a picture, I'll look at that picture. And straight away in my head, I've already got colours of pencils kind of flitting through my head. I'm already visualising what paper I'm going to be using, um, how I'm going to be, what the size of the portrait, the paper, what pencils I'll be using, what sort of techniques, all of that type of thing starts to go through my head straight away. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very good at visualising. Uh, you know, I've taught myself to be very, very good at visualising. And um, that's that's what happens whenever I pick up a photograph and when I'm choosing a reference as well. So I've been choosing the reference for um, September's. Oh, I've got a, a buzzy bee, I think, in here. Oh, well, it'll be all right. If you can hear it buzzing, I, I apologise. <laughs> it's not my brain buzzing, it's a buzzy bee. Um, yeah, so I've got, I've, I've been choosing some reference photos for uh, September. And um, always when I'm looking for a reference photo, I'm looking for, you know, if I want to use a certain paper, would that work on a certain paper? Uh, can I get away with using particular colours? 
will I, am I going to have to put a background in there? Because some pictures, you, you know, they, they're going to look really weird if you don't have the background in there. So all of those sorts of questions are going through my head when I'm looking at reference photos. Um, and again, I'll start to sort of visualise how I would, you know, work everything out. Gosh, that bee is really... In oh, I think it's a wasp. Oh, that's really annoying. Hopefully you can't hear it. I can hear it. It's very annoying. Um, you know, and that's that's kind of what how I do. So I don't ever write pencils down. Um, I might collect a load of pencils before I start something. So I might go, oh, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need that. I'm going to need the other. And I've got like this little blue tub here. And I'll just kind of go through all my pencils, keep all my pencils next to me in jars. And I'll just kind of you know get a few of them out and um and, and off i go and then i've got them and then i can dip in and get others if i need to this is the burnt ochre that i'm using here just to get a little bit of that orange in there that bit of um head there that's uh and then i'm going to use gosh that's a really angry wasp <laughs> uh, and then i'm just going to put a little bit of this terracotta in there as well can you hear the wasp um Blah, 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 yeah. Um, will I be coming to Canada in 2021? Nicole, not 2021. Um, 2021 is looking really, really, really busy um, at the moment. Um, so I think hopefully we might be able to sort something out for 2022, which would be great. Light fast paper. Let me grab a pad of it. Hold on a second. Um, where is it? Hang on. So the light fast paper um, is here. It's in a. It's in its wrapping. Um, so Doant sent me uh, these little ones. These are um, 178 by 254 millimeters, and they are. They're really. It's really really nice paper. It's quite. It's quite creamy coloured. I'd say it's very similar to the Fabriano. Um, traditional white but a little bit creamier uh it's very very nice paper actually so i'm going to be doing some stuff on that um esky yeah i sorry i thought i'd replied that they're, they're they're fantastic i if i'm going to do a tutorial my the images need to be really really clear um so i'll have another look through them but i just need really clear images um did two commissions in the on the artistico second one oh you see, I was going to look at doing the the £300 one, the, the thicker one. I was looking to get some more, of, to, to get some of the much thicker Fabriano. I was looking to get some of that because I thought I might prefer that. I found with the Fabriano, the one that I was using, which is the, I think it's the, th I think it's the £140. Um, if I burnish too much, it almost feels like I'm going to warp the paper which isn't isn't the best thing um you know so I, i'm thinking i might try some of the um the thicker which would be good um hi linda uh new here do you have a tutorial about color pencils i'd like to learn your style oh that's nice francesco francesco so yes i've got, i've got well i've got quite a lot on youtube so if you look through my channel i've got a lot of um i've got a lot of videos on there and then I have my teaching channel, which um, you can subscribe to where I've got I've got hundreds of hours of tutorials on there. Um, and all of my tutorials are real time uh, voiceover. I, I can try and explain exactly what I'm doing. And because it's live voiceover, you get all of my thoughts in there as well. So, you know, I'll kind of. I'll talk about oh I'll use this color and oh maybe that color is not great but then I'll I'll talk about why it, why I've kind of changed my mind all of that type of thing so it's it's quite good that you you get everything you get all of the thought process rather than me having chosen the colors and sticking with the same thing all the way through you see me making mistakes you see me kind of going uh you know kind of rectifying my mistakes all of that you 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 know you get all of that and um yeah i've got a really nice community uh, built up so uh, and you get all the support and help and everything that you need too so so do have a look at that on my patreon if you're um, if you're interested um is that color a blue pencil this one 
So this is the light grey and it is a very bluey, a very bluey grey. Um, but it's fantastic for working in sort of like, um, you know, this is, is obviously a black forelock, but he's got um, these highlights and everything in there, which, um, you know, when you use a pencil like this, they're brilliant. And the Pablos are really, really, really soft and creamy. I use the Pablos a huge amount on the elephant that I did. Um, and they're just fantastic. You know, really, really, it's almost like drawing with pastel pencils, but without all of the horrible dust. Um, I mean, it's nothing like drawing with pastel pencils, uh, but it's it's it, the pigment is uh, comes out really, really freely, uh, if that makes sense. They're really I love the Pablos on the dark grey pastel mat. They work so well. Um, Pablo light grey looks warm. No, it's very cool. And if it looks warm, it'll be your, the calibration on your screen. It's a very cool pencil. Um, cool. It's really cool, but it's also cool in colour. <laughs> um, um, oh, you can't hear the wasp. Oh, it's, it's, it's annoying me, it's completely annoying me. Anyway, Bonnie, what would your advice be? I have two urgent commissions to do, one in graphite and one in cum pencil. Would you work on both at the same time or do one completely then? Well, Carol, if it was if it was me doing it, I would work on them um, separately. I would do one and then I would do the other. But that's purely because I, I find it very hard to concentrate on, on two different pieces at once. With something like this, it's not too bad. You can kind of dip in and out. But if it's a commission, I like to put my all into it. And I have, um, there's an awful lot of thought process gone into it. And there's a lot, an awful lot of visualisation and everything that goes into, into my processes. So if I have two on the go at once, I find it really, really frustrating. I, 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 I can't really do it. I, I find it challenging to do two, two drawings at once. I mean, I have all sorts of things going on at the same time. So I'll be doing a, um, a commission, I'll be doing a drawing, and then I'll also be editing something, um, you know, next to me on the computer and, you know, all, all of that type of stuff. And I can, I can even be on the phone to somebody at the same time, not a client, but, you know, family or something, you know, so... Um, but drawing, having two separate drawings going at once, I find it really, really hard work. So I think that is up to you. Some people are absolutely fine doing that. I, I don't. I, I like to kind of do one, finish it, start on the other one. Um, you know, but um, it, it's up to you. You know, if, if it's something that you think you'd be happy doing, then, then definitely do it. People do. The £140 version feels like a weird combination between slippery surface and a highly textured one. Yeah, hmm. and I'll have to have a look at that. Um, luminance silver grey. Yes, luminance silver grey is a good grey. The the it's not really about the colour. Um, it's more about the feel. Um, you know the 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 Pablos. They're much more sort of chalky. Um, so on the on the on the pastel mat, they they sort of the pigment will move around quite a lot. With the luminance, they're more buttery. So once you put them down, you can move the pigment around, obviously. But um, what happens is you they they blend the 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 pigment blends rather than kind of moves about. If you see what I mean. Um, with the Pablos, they 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 move around, um, and they're just yeah. I don't really use an awful lot of luminance on the dark grey pastel mat, I have to say. I do use luminance on the white pastel mat, but not really on the dark grey. Um, there, are, there are some that I use, so I'll use the light cobalt blue um, on black animals. But, um, you know, the, the Pablos are, uh, um, yeah. So it's more, for me, it's more about the feel than the colour. Um, but uh, the, the silver grey, the luminance silver grey is, is a good... You know, I, I guess it's a good alternative if you're looking for something for colour. Uh, so I'm just using black here and then I'm just going to come in and bring some um, burnt sienna into here. Now, I, this is quite sharp at the end and I don't really like using sharp pencils on pastel mat because it, they ca it can scratch the surface. Um, so I try to keep my pencil sort of quite soft if I can. I'm just going to take that up the ear there. I'm going to have to go and let that wasp out in a minute because it's driving me mad. There's not many things that, that irritate me, but um, 
noises can irritate me you know if you've got the if somebody's got the radio going or, or you can hear people's um music through their their headphones but it's like that horrible tinny sound <laughs> stuff like that I'm just getting really annoyed I'm just gonna slam my pencils down in a minute and shout at the wasp get out um and then I'm gonna use the uh cobalt uh cadmium orange Cadmium orange in the the uh, the polychromos range is a really really great bright orange, and actually you get an awful lot of bright colours in animals, especially these bay horses. You get some really 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 lovely bright bright colours in there, um, and I like I do like to use the polychromos a lot because they are they are pretty translucent, you know. So when you layer, um, you you can really see the other colours underneath. Whereas the, you know, the light fast, the luminance, they're a little bit more opaque. So they do tend to sort of cover quite well, which is great. But sometimes you kind of want to see what's going on underneath a little bit more. And that's when I still when I use my polychromos because I and especially for eyes, I'll use my polychromos for eyes because then I can really see what's going on underneath the layers, which is good. Um, uh, no, oh, never feel guilty, Carol. Just do what you, um, you know, do what you feel works for you. Uh, you know, you'll hear all all sorts of other artists going on about what they do and how they do stuff. And um, there's no right or wrong way ever. It's only what works for you, you know. So um, as long as you feel comfortable about what you're doing, that's all that matters. This is the black that I'm just using here just for this, just to bring this um, tip of this ear in here bringing that in there so I've got uh, I think I've got about 10 out maybe 10 hours of um, elephant video left to edit <laughs> um, and uh, it's funny when I'm editing I do sort of like sound checks all the way through just to make sure that everything's okay and then I can tweak sound if things have gone a bit pear-shaped and uh, I, uh, half the time I'll sit and I'll go oh that's interesting what I've just said then. <laughs> I can't remember what I say. I come out with some really weird stuff when I'm drawing. Um, you know, I'll be telling you what to do and then I'll come up with some come up with something completely random. Or I'll I'll be uh it'll be the end of one of the video clips and I'll be I'll be slipper will start barking or something and it'll um then that'll start the dogs off barking for real and it's yeah, all gets a little bit a bit bedlam in my studio. But uh uh, so I'm really pleased I've finished this big horse commission. So that's, um, and really happy that I'm having it framed for them as well. So that's going to look good. So I dropped that off today. Oh, and then I got my, um, my fabulous, I'll have to, sh I'll have to show you. It's absolutely amazing. Um, a donkey oil painting that I've bought from, um, the wonderful Amy Braswell in, in, in America, who I went to stay with last year. And, uh, she'd done this donkey oil she's just started doing oil painting and she's created these little seaside donkeys and oh they're absolutely fantastic so um i decided i had to have them so they arrived today they've been stuck in customs for a while so that's that's the other thing if anybody is is on here who um you know ships sort of all over the world the customs side of things is really really hard you think you've got it right because you can google and you can see what the cut off price or the cut off charge for customs is because when you send something overseas um you have to send sort of like a customs form in with your you know with whatever you're sending and um you have there's like a code um that you have to put in that that tells whoever it is what it is that you're sending um and um you have to put in the the cost of the goods that you're sending as well and even if you put it as a gift you still have to put a, a cost in there and so you look up on google and you think right okay so i'm going to send to the us or the us is going to send to me what's the cut off so that you don't end up having to pay customs fees and you still you every single time you end up having to pay customs fees and you get a letter through the door going oh your piece is held in customs you know pay blah 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 um, and it's really, really frustrating. I mean, it's not a huge amount, but it just means that you can't get your pieces as quickly as you'd like them to, you know. And I think in the UK, I think it has something to do with VAT. And I think you end up paying VAT. I think it's VAT rather than anything. So whatever whatever the piece is worth, 
you end up paying um you know the equivalent of what 20 percent vat is on that um so um so this this particular piece has been stuck in customs for a while so i've um, it finally arrived today and it's absolutely gorgeous so I'll, I'll give you a quick glimpse of it after um it really is lovely and i can't show you any other pieces because i haven't got any that i finished um so um yeah i can show you a a beautiful uh, hair done with um alcohol inks that the fantastic katie day has done so that's sitting here ready to be framed as well um and um and these beautiful donkeys but um hopefully next week i'll have some pieces that i'll be able to show you and my next commission as well i can actually share on social media and i, I hopefully will be able to do some live streams on it as well over on facebook which would be quite good um because it is that sort of unusual color can't wait to get stuck into them um hi bonnie when do you apply watercolor like an undercoat um, well, you, if you wanted to use watercolour, um, you could use actual watercolour on, um, on a piece like this and you can use it, just, you can just put your watercolour on like you would normally do, let it dry and then use your coloured pencils over the top or you can use a watercolour pencil um, and you, could, you can create uh, your underpainting, um, you know, underneath, you can just sort of, there's, there's, there's different ways of doing it actually, you can use your watercolor pencils a little bit like watercolors and have almost like a palette and sort of you can scribble your pencil on the on like white paper or whatever and then get a paintbrush and dip it into the pigment and then put that on your paper um you can you can um actually put the dry pencil on to your surface that you're working on um, and then activate the pigment with water once you put all of that pigment on that works really well um, you I mean you can even so go so far as sort of like getting a water brush and sort of like putting it on the end of your pencil and and using your pencil wet um, I, I don't think they recommend doing that probably because you might just sort of damage the wood and everything around the end of the pencil but that's I do that quite a lot with my museum aquarelle pencils especially the white um, and I'll just dampen the end of it if I want sort of like a bright blob of white or a highlight in an eye or something. And that works really, really well. Um, you know, so it's it's very, coloured pencils are very versatile in, in that you can use them with pastels, you can use them with acrylics, you, you know, you can use them with all sorts of different medium. Um, you know, they work really, really well. So this is the Caput Morton Violet that I'm working using here. It's like a reddy, violety colour and really, really good again for these sort of dark, um, gingery, chestnutty areas. Um, super noise sensitive. <laughs> no, I'm terrible. Um, is it record? Uh, when you edit and release the replay of the Zoom session from last week, where will you post it? Oh, um, the the Q and A. If it's the Q and A. Um, what you need to do is you need to um, subscribe to, I sent I put a link on my Facebook, if you subscribe to that um, and then you can unsubscribe again, not an issue, but if you subscribe to that and just drop your email and your, your name in there, you'll be directed straight away to the video that you can watch. Um, it was the easiest way of doing it. I didn't really want to put it up on YouTube because I just felt there was a lot of people on there and... I think for privacy's sake, I just didn't think it was it was the right sort of format to put put it up on um, on YouTube. So I've I've added it to it's actually sitting in Mailchimp. So if you subscribe to the link that I've put on my Facebook, it will direct you straight to the video. Um, you know, and that seems to have worked quite well actually. Um, which bluey grey is this, please? This one. This one, Linda, this is the light grey Pablo. Um, a really, really good pencil. Um, oh, I'll need to have a look at that then, Eski. I'll have a look for that. I Yeah, I've obviously missed that. Um, Hi, Bonnie. Is there a specific brand of watercolour pencil you like the most? Yes, there is. And let me grab one for you and then you can have a look. Um, oops. Bring all my pencils out here. Just bring a couple out and then you can see which ones they are. Now, where is that one that I was using? It was a brown. Oh, well, I'll use the black. I use the black and then you can see that. 
to be fine. Um, and then I've got the white as well. Here we go. Um, oh, I've got some. I have got some coloured ones here actually. So, oops. So I really like the Karen Dash Museum Aquarelle, and these are some of them here. I'm just kind of have a bit of a talk about these. So this is the. Um, these are you will probably find the most expensive pencils. They are beautiful, beautiful quality. You can use them dry and you can use them wet. Um, this is the black and then I've got the white. So I have a lot of these white ones. This is the, the white that I use all of the time and it is a fantastic white. And this is the one where you can just dampen the end and you can kind of just put a little bit of white in over the top and it works really, really well. Um, what's this one? This is gold, cadmium, yellow. This one and then I've got this one which is Naples ochre so I don't use them I tend to use the white an awful lot and then sometimes I might use something like this they're very soft so if I bring this in here again they're sort of quite um, thick they've got quite a thick core so you get quite a lot of and they're quite opaque as well when you use them dry um, you know but they are beautiful vibrant colors uh, and I, as a watercolour pencil, I, I, these are my preferred ones. I just think the, the quality of them is, is superb. I think they're beautiful, beautiful pencils. Um, and the colours are really lovely. They don't have a massive choice of colour. Um, but yeah, they're, they're very, very nice pencils. And I use the white, use the white all of the time. So if I just dampen the end, I just, I'm going to, I'm going to put it, I'm going to dampen it on my tongue. <laughs> And what you have to know is that every single um, product made by Karen Dash is uh, the pencils are non-toxic. So it's not going to harm you if you put a little bit on your tongue. But if I just put a bit on my tongue and then I just bring it into here. You can see. You can get sort of some quite nice, very, very easily get some quite nice whites in there. I find it's better if you dot it so it's better for sort of like things like um, eyes and stuff like that but you can get a really nice bright white in there um, you know just sort of dampening the end of that but they they are lovely lovely pencils um, and those are the museum aquarelle ones I use watercolour and pastel mat they bled out so much yeah well that's the thing with the pastel mat it's like a little bit like blotting paper so if you you're going to put a dab in and it's just going to go, you know, so you, you've got to kind of, um, well, watercolour, you can't, it's, it's very difficult to control anyway, isn't it? You know, so you've got to be quite careful. You do have to be quite careful with it. But as an underpainting, it's, it's, it works really, really nicely. Um, you know, I, I've done it a few times and, um, you know, there are, there are artists out there who, who do an awful lot of that. You know, they, they use that technique quite a lot, um, you know, so it's, yeah, it's it's a good one. I mean, if you were to go onto YouTube and try and find um, videos and everything where they where they use an underpainting, um, you know, if you have a, if you search for um, Animal Art by Law, she has a lot of videos that have got the um, watercolour underpainting. I don't know whether... I, I don't know whether she shows you exactly what to do. I think she probably does. Um, she's probably got some real time in there and it's probably got a, a little bit of a time lapse and everything. But, um, you know, if you if you fancy using the, a watercolour underpainting, you know, it works really, really well. Um, so she's she's definitely one to have a look at. I'm, I'm not I can't. I think there's a few people who do it. I know um, Claire Milligan, she uses watercolour pens. Oh, Shanna, Shanna Lee Hartson. She's another really good one for using watercolour pencils. Um, and I think she's actually got some really good cat videos on YouTube. Um, and she tends to use them uh, dry, wet and dry together. So not putting a base down of the watercolour pencils, but she uses Supracolour and she uses Museum Aquarelle as well. Um, and she'll kind of put, she'll go in and she'll put a base of colour down, but it's not all wet. And then she'll put dry in on the top and then she might have little bits that go in wet as well. She's got a very unique style um but um that's probably a good one to to have a look at as well shanna lee hartshorn um you know she's got a few tutorials up on um on youtube now as well so it's worth having a look and she does the most amazing digital art as well i mean 
it absolutely blows your mind the digital stuff she does it's crazy um you know so have a look at that um scribble patch the watercolor pens onto paper as a palette then dips yeah that and that's it that's there's all sorts of different things that you can do um have to find your child oh that's nice um patty thank you oh thank you uh thank you so much i'll look into that yeah they are lovely they're expensive but they're lovely should we use distilled water with watercolour pencils? Oh, I don't know, Laurie. <laughs> probably. You probably should, but I'd, I'd, I'm not sure that it'll... I don't know. I can't answer that question. I guess if you're a purist and you, um, you know, and, and you're, you're sort of like big into them, then possibly. But um, I, I, I honestly couldn't tell you um, is the answer to that. Um, I would love to be able to get the museum aquarels, especially the white. Oh, they they are fantastic. Can you not get the eskies? Is is the is there a reason why you can't get them? Um, I thought it would work well as an underpainting. I've yet to add the pencil on the top, and think I'll try it again. But yeah, yes, yes. Well, w the other thing that I would do as well is I would make sure that they it dries completely. So once you've added all of your whatever you're adding. Just make sure it dries completely. I would go so far as leaving it for 12 to 24 hours to let it dry totally. Um, you know, and the other thing as well is don't go too overboard with, with your pigment because, it, you, you know, you still want to have a lot of that lovely tooth in there. You know, that you can then go in and put your detail and everything in um, over the top. So, so this little forelock's looking quite nice, isn't it? It's looking all right. When you were starting out, did you just dive into portraits? Or did you work on those? Um, I just do I just do dove. I dove straight in, and funnily enough, I was. I saw a friend on Monday. I've not seen her for since Christmas actually, and I had breakfast with her, and um, we were talking about different things. And she's um she's a coach. Uh, she used to work with me, and she's a she's a um a, a coach as well, and um. Uh, you know so it was really good to see her because she she's very good at sort of um you know sorting me out if i'm getting a bit you know <laughs> i don't know um and um she um she actually has one of my first ever drawings that i'd done of a little of a hair um and she actually pulled it out she went oh gosh you remember this and it was from like four years ago so yeah i i think i did a lot of I did a lot of horse eyes to begin with and then I just wanted to draw pictures so um, I didn't realize about copyright then but I just I just pulled some pictures off Google that I liked and drew them um, which of course you've got to be very very careful of because you need to credit the photographer which I didn't realize that then um, and um, you know so I think I did a little hair and I did a uh, what else did I do a hair squirrel did a little squirrel and you can see you know even and they were the very very early drawings and you can you know my layering was okay but I what I was doing then back then was I was going straight in with detail I was just drawing detail and not kind of thinking about the tonal values and everything so that it was quite nice to look back on actually and think gosh you know how things have changed and how um you know when you kind of get to know stuff and you pick you pick things up from so many different artists and everything like that you know even you know we, we talk about being self-taught but you know if you're on social media or if you're on youtube or something like that you know you're going to absorb so much from other people that um you know think you are going to pick up an awful lot of of, of stuff um you know so self-taught yeah i mean I, I guess you know we are you are self-taught if you haven't kind of been to you know got a degree or anything like that but um i, I yeah i mean i class myself as self-taught but i'm not really sure what that means um but yeah it was really really interesting to kind of see that that picture again actually in the flesh rather than a photograph um you know and, and sort of uh, see how i how i did things back then and it was definitely all about the detail there so I'm just bringing this, this is the um, the, poly, the Pablo cream that I'm just bringing in here. And what you can see as well, I don't know whether you can see, um, it, the cream is picking up on the texture of the paper. And not particularly on this bit here, on these ears, but if you're drawing something like um, a shiny bit of fur on the top of a dog's head and he's a gingery dog and you've got like a bit of a, a creamy coloured shine, 
using something like the Pablo in over the top and letting the grain shine through, it actually almost gives it a bit of a sparkle and it and it actually helps it look even shinier. So using your paper and using the texture of your paper to help is you know is a really really good idea. Don't don't battle against your paper. Always sort of work with it. You know, and you're going to get better better effects. Um, uh, but, 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 but yes, Caran Dash is expensive, but they are, you know, they are quality products. They really are. Um, now I'm going to find my where is it? Walnut brown. I'm just going to get a little bit of walnut brown in here. And again, just going to kind of come in between those pencil strokes. So these at the moment, these are just pencil strokes. That's all they are. But um, eventually they will end up being hairs and they'll be a little bit more detailed. So I'm just going to bring those in there. Like that. So I did the, um, the Q&A last week. Was it last week? Saturday? I can't remember when it was. Was it Saturday? I can't remember. I don't even know what day it is today. It was Thursday today, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I did the Q&A. Oh, it was on the 1st, wasn't it? So it was this last Saturday. And um, it was amazing. I was um, oversubscribed, which was brilliant. So we had 100 in there. You can only have 100 in a Zoom. And what I thought I would do is I'd start a monthly drop-in centre, um, you know, for people who just want to come and ask a, a specific question. Um you know about anything sort of art, art related color pencil related that sort of thing uh so i'm going to be looking at sort of trialing that pretty soon um and then of course i have my art club as well on patreon which is every week so every week we get together as a group and um you know we do different different things this week was was brilliant actually we had uh, ruth who's on the um on the chat at the moment uh photographer amazing photographer and she came on and did sort of like a session on photography which was fantastic um and uh telling us about this new well it's not new software but it's software that she that she introduced me to a couple of weeks ago and I, i've i've bought and i'm now using and it's it's absolutely amazing this this software suite that kind of teams up with Lightroom so if you've got Photoshop and Lightroom Lightroom in particular um, this software kind of teams up with that and it means that you can um, you know if you get really bad reference photos you can actually do something about them I mean it's not it's not like a magic 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 wand but you know if you get sent a really tiny photo um, you know if you try to resize that in Photoshop all it does is resize your pixels and it just it just kind of enhances it and just makes it look even worse when you make it bigger um, but this particular software has got something where you can actually enhance it um, and make it bigger and you don't lose the quality and it is fantastic uh, so I've used it on a couple of pieces um, recently this this next commission that I'm doing beautiful photo but tiny um, and I've used this um, Topaz the Gigapixel to um, increase the size of it and I was like absolutely blown away with the quality that I ended up with um, you know so uh, it, it's it's pretty good my my patron isn't just about drawing and about um, colour pencils you know and tutorials there's so much more in there that um, you know I'd love to kind of introduce people and they come in and they chat and I've got a chap coming next month for, for a guest uh, a guest spot and he, um, gosh, I can't remember his exact title, but he tests surfaces. So he actually looks at paper surface under the microscope. Um, and he sent me a message. So I think last week we were talking about odorless mineral spirits. Or I was talking somewhere about, or was it, I think it might have been Q&A session. I'm not sure anyway. We were talking about odorless mineral spirits. And I was saying that I felt that they may well affect the light rate, the, the light fast rating of pencils. Um, anyway, he's come back today and he said, he kind of sent me an email about all the sorts of different things. And he said the OMS, when, when he's kind of looked at it under the microscope and seen, um, you know, what the OMS does to the to the pencils, um, he said it absolutely doesn't degrade the light fastness, which is actually a really, really good 
piece of news you know if you do use OMS odorless mineral spirits to kind of um, blend your pencils and everything um, basically they don't affect the light fast rating of your pencils so that's really really good and it's it's getting to know people like that you know I mean I never knew somebody like that existed <laughs> uh, you know and um, he, he takes papers under the microscope and tests them out for all sorts of different things so he's going to be a guest on my patreon so we get to know all of this amazing stuff it's it's um it's absolutely brilliant um so i'm coming in here i'm using sort of like a um a few different colors here this is the dark sepia again and i'm just now that i've kind of got all of that color in um i can just start to bring in a few of these little hair lines now and, and add a few little details and because we've got those layers in we're able to get a few lighter pencil strokes in there as well which is good um but bum bum i'm in the process of doing it oh, carol honestly carol it is great it is great um nicole now nicole you're you're a photo you're a photographer aren't you nicole i'm sure you sent the the photo of the owl today that i saw that you tagged me into which is incredible um but topaz yeah it's it's great um yeah it was good wasn't it it was really good uh, affiliate and can provide yes do ruth you can put it in the chat you can put it in the chat not a problem um you know if anybody wants to have a look at it but i mean i i will only recommend something if it works and i, I like to test it out before i kind of recommend and um I, I think as somebody who works with other people's reference photos it is absolutely definitely um worth getting um you know i, I I, I think it's great and it's and it's a brilliant um additional tool in my toolkit that's for sure so you know it's um definitely worth doing so now i'm going to get my burnt ochre um i'm just going to put a little bit of this into here on this edge here and you can see i'm just sort of dabbing dabbing the color in I'm using really, really light pressure and I'm just sort of dabbing, dabbing that in there just to get a little hint of that colour. I don't want like a big heavy line down the side of that ear. I want it to be nice and soft. It's coming in there and then I think we'll just add a little bit more to whatever's going on here. Just bring a little bit more in here. When you first start um you know putting your pencil and everything down on the pastel mat it can look a little bit like you're drawing with a poker you know <laughs> it can look a little bit sort of um thick and woolly but um you, you just gotta you just gotta keep going it, you use really nice light pressure and just sort of sketch your lines in that's that i find that that using sort of like a real sketchy stroke to begin with works really nicely and might get a little bit of this fur in on the top actually let's just do a little bit of that um, so what I'm gonna do first I'm actually gonna put a little bit of the cinnamon in first um, in here and again just sort of very gently just bringing in a little bit of that hair color in there and the reason I'm using the cinnamon this sort of brownie pink is because I can see glimpses of that in the fur and kind of underneath and i like to work sort of inside out you know from the in from from sort of like um the the very sort of initial hairs that are covering the skin outwards um i find kind of having that mindset and thinking in that way helps to create those layers and everything and i can see definitely see some of this pinky color in there and that's probably the lightest color that i can see there might be some there might be some sort of slightly creamy colors in there but um, and I think that's my one of my uh, drives whizzing away. Um, and then I'm going to use the burnt ochre in there as well. So, and what you'll find with the dark grey pastel mat, which is very different to how the white works, you you do kind of get this almost pastely effect. You know where you get a little, you do get a little bit more dust. Um, and the layers sort of they sit on top of each other but the, the pigment really moves around whereas with the white it is more like working on a smooth surface 
um, you know, the white board. If you're working on the white paper, that tends to be quite grainy, um, which I find really frustrating. I think if you're a pastel artist, it's better to have the grainy, the grainy type of pastel mat rather than the smooth. But sadly, you can't really pick and choose. You get what you're given. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of that in there. And then I'm going to bring a little bit of the dark. In fact, I'm going to go black in there, quite black in there. And then I'm going to bring that little, um, where is it, the light grey. Probably need to sharpen it, actually, but I think we'll be okay. And then I can just bring a little bit of the light grey in there just to sort of show a bit of a highlight. And you can see it works really, really well. The light grey Pablo is one of my favourites. And then you can just get a few little hairs on there. I do need to sharpen it, but can't be bothered. And then I can just bring a little bit more in there. It's lighter. All over the top of that. Okay. Um. Oh, Fabri, how are you? How are you getting on with the pastel mat? Um. Oh, Annie, the 50 birthday pencil pencil collection. Yeah. Now, the the um, the problem with the pencils, all pencils at the minute is because of everything that's going on in the world, um, the manufacturers are kind of, I think they're promising to send stuff and then not everything is sent. So I think um, Emma is trying her best to get everything out. But if it's a little bit delayed, it's due to manufacturers um, rather than Emma. And all I would say is if you have ordered a set, just, you know, just try to be patient, really, because I think Emma's I, I think it's it was an awful lot to take on. And I don't think we any of us really realized um, that there would be such an issue, I think, with um, uh, with pencil production. I mean, with with Prisma's they stopped production completely and they've only just started it again now so um i think i think just yeah just be uh, you know keep keep being patient um you know and they and they will arrive um but it's um the, the problem is that the manufacturers are kind of saying one thing and then i think not kind of holding up their end of the bargain um but it's it's so difficult at the minute because you just kind of don't really know what's going on so i'm going to use some more pink in here um so I'm just going to use a little bit more of this cinnamon in here. There's quite a lot in this forelocky bit here, so I'm just going to bring a bit in there. And again, what's really nice about the pastel mat is you can you can put your darks in, you can then put your uh, lighter bits in, you can then bring a little bit more dark in there. You can bring you know you can just keep going. Uh, you know, which is really really nice. And I'm just going to bring a little bit of that in there. Touch in there and then I'm going to bring that black in again. And what you can do is once you start to bring in sort of some of these pencil strokes, you can then start to pick out some of these strokes and actually use them for shadows and um, texture and all of that type of thing. Uh, and that's another really, really good idea. Uh, you know, for putting all of your, um, you know, plotting all of your colours and your tones and everything in to begin with. Um, you know, you kind of you're kind of almost building the 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 detail in uh, as you're going. But but not sitting there drawing tiny little details. You they just sort of appear. Uh, you know, which is great. Okay, so I'm just coming back in here and a little bit darker in there. Again, probably need to sharpen my pencil a bit, but I've been using Fabriano for a week. <laughs> I'm sick of sharpening my pencils. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I've got to sharpen them again. Um, so, and they were like, yeah, I'm not used to sharpening my pencils at all. It um, feels very strange. It does give you a better effect, I have to say, on the smooth papers to use um, sharp pencils. Um, because I, I was kind of being a little bit lazy and not always using sharp pencils and it it does make a difference 
Okay, so just come around there. This is the light grey again. And then um Oh, Carla, that's nice to nice to have you on here. Thank you. Um, so, Fabio, I'm using the anthracite plus one struggling a bit. Mm, yeah. Well, the the anthracite is a is um is a law unto itself. <laughs> I think probably a, a great one to kind of get stuck into to begin with because it's going to teach you an awful lot. But it's um I mean it, it, you know pieces done on the anthracite can look absolutely amazing. So I'd, all I'd say is you know just use your use your layers um you know and stick with it and um just keep going uh you know um and hopefully you'll have a piece of anthracite that you know is is good quality i think they're i think they're better now um you know so i, I don't tend to use the anthracite because it's i don't know i just I, i'm i like the white and i like the dark gray and that those are the only two that i really use so I'm bringing a little bit of this cream in over the top of that pink and that orange in there. And then I might just go back in again and just tint it back pink very slightly. Um, all right, and then I'm going to use my Burnt Sienna. And what I want to do is I actually want to get some sort of texture in here. This is quite, um, if you know horses, you'll know that the fur quality changes. Even on the head, the fur quality changes. And you get this very sort of soft, fluffy um, fur, uh, kind of in the forelock area here where the, where the forelock starts to grow. It tends to be thicker, softer and fluffier, um, you know, and it can, it can have like curly bits in there and everything. And then as it comes down the face, it tends to go, it, as it kind of goes over the eyes and onto the cheeks and kind of underneath the eyes, the hair tends to get um, slightly longer in places a little bit coarser in places like on the cheek it might go a little bit coarser depending on the breed of the horse and everything down the front of the nose it does tend to get thicker and coarser and a little bit longer so in the winter um you know if you've got a horse with his winter woolies on and he's not been clipped or anything you can end up with a really really hairy face and you can almost like put your hands into the the fur on the on the front of the face um, but the, the hair under the eyes tends to be a lot smoother, a lot slicker, a lot shorter. And then when you get right down to the muzzle area, the hair tends to get very, very, very fine and it's very velvety. So it's important when you're drawing your subject to kind of understand the different um, quality of fur, or the quality of hair that is sort of, you know, all over their all over their body, really, so that you can replicate that with your pencils when you're drawing it. Um, you know, and that's why it's a good idea to kind of um, research your whatever it is that you're drawing you know if you don't know about horses go and visit a horse go and have a look at their hair go and um, feel the hair go and see how the hair changes direction all of that type of thing and if because the horse's hair changes direction a lot and it's important that you get your um, the direction correct because that kind of shows the underlying bone structure and actually, if you Google something like um, horse hair direction or something like that, you can get illustrations with um, sort of like a little stick horse and, and with little arrows. And it will show you how the hair grows on a horse. And that's particularly useful. You know, if you've got if you've got a picture of a horse and you're not overly sure um, about which direction the hair is going, something like that can be really, really useful because it's so important to get the direction going in, in the right in the right way and on dogs as well you know I mean I've especially things like dogs like um, staffies and stuff like that where you're you've got that very broad face and the, the the skin is stretched quite tautly over the skull so you've got to really get the bone structure and everything correct underneath um, and very often in the past, I've had I've drawn a staffy and I've got the hair going in slightly the wrong direction and he looks like he's blowing his cheeks out. <laughs> he looks like he's got big fat cheeks just because I've got the hair direction going in the wrong way. So it's really important to kind of understand hair direction and, and, and why, why it's changing direction, um, you know, and the quality of it. So there's my little bit of um, 
waffling on. Um, is there a specific side of Fabriana to use? Uh, Emily, I would say use the side that has got where the Fabriano Artistico is spelt the correct, uh, you know, front to front, you know, as in Fabriano Artistico rather than backwards. Um, but I'm not a not an expert on that, so um, I, I wouldn't know. I have just used the side where the the Fabriano Artistico wording is is reads the right way. Uh, you know, that's all I've done. After using draft and film, I'm not really struggling with. Ah, Deborah, that's interesting. I think pastel mat is, um, yeah, pastel mat and and uh, drafting film. I think actually you can use very similar techniques on them. Um, you know, they. I never really liked smooth paper, but I really, really enjoyed using the um, uh, drafting film. Just going to get the white here. Just going to put a little bit of white in here, and then we know what we're doing. Um, this is the museum aquarelle. Just sort of sketching this little white star in here. Um, <laughs> this is amazing. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's nice. Uh, just bought drafting film, excited to try it, brilliant. I thought bought probably on an artistic or traditional white paper recently, but the size of the sheet is much bigger than I require. Um, I don't know, Naha. I have bought it in two different... So I bought a pad of it to begin with, a tiny weeny little pad. And then I bought traditional white in, I think it's about 20 inches wide or 22 inches wide, something like that. And then I bought some of the... Do they call it the high white? The, the white, white one. And that one is a, a much bigger size. So I'm, I'm, I don't know whether you can buy them cut down, but I tend to buy things in sheets and cut them down, to be honest. I find it's um, more cost effective to, to, to work it that way. Um, you know, uh, I mean, some paper like the Lightfast, which I'm, I'm going to be doing a piece on the, on the new Light, the Derwent Lightfast paper, uh, that doesn't come in sheets. It only comes in pads. Um, you know, so... Um, but I think the Fabrian, I don't know what sizes it comes in, to be honest. I'm sorry, I'm being completely useless tonight with my information. Um, but uh, I've, I got, I managed to get it in two different sizes, so I'm not sure. They, they might pre-cut it, I guess. But then, you, then you're paying for somebody to cut it up. You might as well just buy the big sheets and cut it yourself. So, but, and if you're going to cut your paper yourself, just make sure you've got a steel ruler. I just have the, you know, when you have these visions of slicing your thumb off and stuff like that. So I'm just putting a little bit more cream in over the top here. And a, a lot of the time with my drawings, what will happen is, and I think I probably drive people completely crazy. So we'll spend ages and ages, I'll be doing a tutorial and we'll spend ages and ages putting like a load of pencil in. And we'll like, la la la, yeah, like, very good Bonnie we've spent three hours now plotting all of this colour in and then I'll come in and I'll go over the whole top of it and <laughs> get rid of everything um, and people probably sit there and go what did she just do <laughs> um, but there's always a reason for doing it and um, with pastel mat in particular you know you might put some marks down on the paper and then you might cover them back up again but those marks still they're still there you can still kind of see them through the layers and they are going to um, they're going to kind of add to whatever it is that you're doing. So, you know, it, there's always a reason for doing that. Um, and, and especially with pastel mat, I think it can be a little bit of an anomaly anomaly, uh, you know, as to why I do stuff. Um, I mean, you know, sometimes granted it will be because I've made a terrible mistake and I'm like, yeah, let's just <laughs> wipe over that. Um, but the majority of the times it's because, you know, I've meant to do it. Um, you know, you put your put your colour down, you put a little bit of detail and then and you go over the top of it. Um, you know, so but everybody has different ways of doing things, don't they? Uh, ba -ba -ba. Right. Drafting film order got shipped to the USA. Um, oh, I hope so, Ruth. Pad of Fabiana I just bought doesn't have the logo on, so I have to do some. Oh, yes, do that. Emily oh I don't think the pads do have the logo on um yeah so I don't know I think they're both the same I don't know 
Um, do you trace the shapes on drafting film? What do you use to do this? Carla, what I do with drafting film, because it's a, a, um, a semi-transparent surface, um, what I tend to do is either put it on a light box with a printout underneath and just do a quick you know, outline of it, or I'll, I'll stick it onto my computer screen and again, just do a quick outline of it. Um, and what I've started to do, if I can remember to do it, and half of the time I don't remember to do it, is um, draw on the back of the film, do the outline is, as a flipped version on the back of the film, and then the graphite that I use doesn't get incorporated with all of my um, coloured pencils, which is, you know, actually has helped really quite a lot. Um, yeah, so that's what I tend to do. And then if you if you want, you can always then come back in again. So I'm just going to use this, which is the Granite Rose Pablo. Um, and I'm just going to come in and put a little bit of this into here, a little bit of texture in there and just kind of pink up this orangey colour in here as well. Um, but you can then slide your um, line art or your photograph or whatever under the under the film every now and again just you know if you've lost any lines or if you need a little bit of extra help or something um you know you can do that uh which which works quite well but i tend to just do sort of like a quick quick outline and then um i work from an ipad rather than a printout so that doesn't really work for me but you could do so it's, it's very versatile as the film okay so let's just come around there a little bit um Ah, uh, right, okay, yeah, I think, I think I've got the 22 inch, I think I've got an, an even bigger one. I think I might have sort of like a 27 inch one as well, I don't know. Um, I'm just happy to be back on pastel mat, to be honest. <laughs> so again, just putting this sort of base in. Um, always thinking about the hair direction. Kind of coming in there, just putting that. And then we can, I'm going to use the granite rose again, actually. And again, it's just sort of getting the colour and the tone and everything, and then the details will come after. But the one thing I do like to do, if I can, is get the texture of the hair in early on, because then you can use those pencil strokes that you've, you've kind of got in there for texture. You can use those to help build the, um, the finer detail later on. You know, so instead of just kind of covering it all with a smooth layer of pencil and then having to kind of build the texture in later, you might as well use pencil marks like this, which are similar, if not exactly the same as the hairs. You know, just kind of killing two birds with one stone, I suppose. Um, OK, and then we can just come in there as well. So you, you can see here you're starting to get some quite nice detail in there, even though we're only on layer two. You know, and it's not really detail, it's just plotting colour. And then when we get down to this bit here, this is where it really starts to change direction. And I haven't got any more outlines down here, but to be honest, um, the way that I draw, I tend to I tend to freehand most of my stuff anyway, because I end up kind of obliterating all of the lines that I've drawn in. So it, it all tends to be mostly freehanded anyway, really. Um, it, it's I do prefer to kind of work out where bits go. I mean, sometimes I get really mad with myself because I haven't done a great outline. But then, you know, I don't really need it anyway because I, I, I like to work things out myself. You know, I've, when I'm uh, when I'm doing my tutorials, I'll be sitting there going, mm, so this bit goes here and this bit goes here and this bit goes here, you know, so. Um, on fire, Bonnie, how do you light up this cold night? Oh, these are... Oh, that's really kind. Thanks, Vishnu. Um, I think I need to build a work of bigger areas of bite on the huge. Oh, probably I'm working on something completely different, but listening to you keeps me calm and focused. Relaxation tapes. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to do some. Yes, I'll have to do some relaxation tapes. <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> um, no, I haven't actually. Thank, thank you for that. That makes me laugh. I know my, 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 my daughter would think that's hilariously funny. <laughs> and Vincent, would be, Vincent, if Vincent could talk, would be like, no, my mother is not relaxing at all. <laughs> she just shouts at me. 
um, I have to be quite um, because with Vincent being a um, a young dog and a very big young dog, I have to be um, quite firm with him, um, and firm just with my my voice. I mean, you know, I'm, I wouldn't ever smack him or anything like that, but I have to be quite firm with my voice. And he, out of all three of them, he's the only one that comes back <laughs> when you call him. He's actually a really, really good boy, but I have to call him by his Sunday name. So he has to be, you know, I, when I call him, it's like, Vincent, come here. And he just stops whatever he's doing and he's like trots over. He's ever such a good boy. And then the girls just completely and utterly ignore me. Um, Slipper is, she's the, the top dog and she has to, um, she has to have the last word in everything. You know, you, you put them outside, you go and you go and call them in. The other two will come in, Slip, Slip will just stand there, won't come in. So you shut the door and then she'll come. So she has to be the one that is, you know, in charge, basically. She's so, she's terrible. She lies in the doorway and the other two dogs den go, you know, they, they wouldn't they wouldn't even think of kind of jumping over the top of her or crawling over the top of her or anything. They just, uh, you know, so Nellie just stands there barking to get to come in. If Vincent's lying over the door and Nelly wants to go out, she just climbs over the top of him. <laughs> and he just like looks at her and is, you know. So uh, they're, they're so funny. Funny, funny dogs. But Vinny's, um, he's ever such a good boy and he loves his cuddles. Um, he's a very, very cuddly boy. Um, right, so I'm just going to put a little bit more in there. What time are we on? Oh gosh, 20 past eight, blimey. Um, uh, uh, Vincent, <laughs> yes, that. But do you know what Vishnu? His his real name because he's a he's a registered deer hound. So his real name is uh, Seton Valley Starry Night after Vincent Van Gogh's painting. So there you go. So that's really lovely, isn't it? And that's why we call him Vincent. I won't tell you the the, the other name that I call him because that's too rude for YouTube. <laughs> um, puppies, yeah. Yeah, you have to be, you've got to be really stern with them. Oh, I don't know who's here. Is that my son's here now? Hmm. Yeah, you've got to be really stern with them, especially the big ones, because, you know, they, 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 they've got to, you've, well, they're so big, you know. So, um, right, so I think I've probably got to a point now. I'm going to use a little bit of the Caput Morton Violet just in here, just to create some of these shadowy bits in here. So you can see very, very quickly, just with these little marks, you can actually create the texture of the fur quite, quite easily. Um, let's put in those in here. And then I just want to, I really want to show you these, um, the donkeys that I've just got from America's because they're absolutely amazing. And it's, it's a quite a nice size that I should be able to get it on my drawing board and show you. Um, so this is the Caput Morton Violet in here. Um, Bonnie, use your good boy as a lure for the girls. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's what he does. He's, he is a good boy. Um, yes, I, do. I wonder how Vincent named me. I know exactly. Um, oh, you've got a little lamb on your lap. How cute. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't know. But, um, yeah, good old Vinny has been running around well they're all they're all being quiet tonight because they're worn out and poor little nelly with her sore foot i hope she's all right poor little girl she had such a nice time in the paddling pool she was just, well she lay down she was splashing in it and then she lay down so okay so i'm just going to bring a little bit more around here and then this isn't so bad actually i think we could call this sort of um finished and then next week Next week, I'm thinking maybe some drafting film might be quite good. Um, oh, we could do some curls. That would be really fun. Oh, and I just want to show you the new slice as well. So let me just show you this new slice. And I'm going to show you the donkeys. And then I'm going to go and have the rest of my tea. So this is the new slice tool that has come out. And what do they call it? Hang on. They call it the manual slim pen cutter okay um so it's got the same blade as this is the manual pen cutter so you'll know this is the round one and and actually when i hold this um i end up with this 
button bit here kind of going onto my finger and it is it is fine but it can be a little bit you know if you're using it a lot it can get a little bit can be a bit sore um so this one uh the manual slim pen cutter now it's got i don't know whether you can see there it's got this um it's almost like a spring loaded uh button that pushes it up and it's got two and it feels really really clunky clunky in a good way if <laughs> you see what i mean um you know and it's it's sort of spring loaded so you've got two um levels of taking the uh blade out and the blade's quite nice and secure um and it's a it's the same i think it's the same blade a quick look it's a little bit i don't know if you can see that it's a little bit now is it the same blade it might be exactly the same blade it might just be my eyes but it's that sort of nice rounded um and actually it sits really really nicely in your hand um it's more sort of i guess more sort of scalpel shape but it's it's chunky but it's quite nicely weighted so it sits very nicely in your hand almost like a pen um and um i think it's going to be really quite nice to use can't can't really tell on the um on the gray because you, it doesn't really doesn't really you can't really tell when it comes out you can tell on the white but um yeah i'm thinking it's going to be quite nice and it's um you know it's got this weighted um not weighted but spring loaded little button um and uh yeah, I think it's going to be quite nice. So I quite like that. So that's new from Slice. They've just sent me that today. So that's quite a good one. And then I'm just going to show you this donkey quickly. I'm just having some messages through to say that Nelly's getting upset. Um, I just want to show you these donkeys because they are absolutely best. I don't think they're wet. They're still a little bit damp, I think. Um, but I just want to show you. This oh, God, I've just pulled my camera out. That's clever, isn't it? Um, just want to show you these little donkeys here. Um, let me just check that they're actually in focus. Yeah. So these are from. Um, oh, I'll just switch that. Let's switch that off, and then we don't need that, do we? Uh, so these are from. Um, an artist in America, so she's just started to do oil painting, and um, I'd I'd stayed with her last year, and she's the most fabulous artist and um, colour pencil artist, and she's she wanted to do oils, and um, she's created this, and I just absolutely love it. I just love it. Look at their little hooves, um, just gorgeous, and it reminds me of um, my family holidays in Filey, uh, you know, on the um, on the east coast there. So um, so I bought it. And I absolutely love it. So I'm taking it tomorrow to be to be box mounted. Um, and um, yeah, and it's still it's still a little bit tacky. So I've just got to be careful and then I'll have to have it varnished at some point. But um, it's beautiful. I just love it. This is I love I'd love to be able to paint like this. I really would. Um, you know, just I just adore it. I'm so happy with it. So, uh, yeah. Yes, I know, Amanda. <laughs> Scarborough donkeys. I know, aren't they absolutely gorgeous? I just love them. Um, and what I love about it is they're so painterly, you know, and they've just got those broad brush strokes and just a little bit here, a little bit there, and they're just absolutely perfect. Yeah, yeah, they're just, you know, I love them, absolutely love them. And then um, let me just show you this other one as well while I'm at it. Um, so this one has got a, it's got a bit of a... You can see the whole thing, but this one's got a bit of a, a shine on it. But this is another one that <laughs> I commissioned this piece. It's quite big. So this is from an artist called Katie Day. Um, and she uses um, alcohol inks. And this one is alcohol inks on a canvas. Um, I just absolutely, I just love it. I mean, look, I just love it. I love it. <laughs> Um, I, I'm just buying all of this art at the moment. I just oh, I absolutely adore it. And, you know, so this is another one I need to get framed up as well. But this is Katie Day um, and she has the most phenomenal pieces. You know, all of this gorgeous colour and everything. Just oh, love it, love it, love it, love it. 
um you know so um yeah i think at once well i've got so many pieces at my art at my um at my framers i think once i get everything framed i think i'm gonna have to open an art gallery i think <laughs> i've got the most you know i've got tons and tons of paintings um so uh, anyway right so i will um pop that up there and just put that back there again so i will uh, love you and leave you thank you um thank you all very very much for joining me next week um yeah let's do let's do some curls on uh, on drafting film i quite like the idea of that curly curly fur some sort of curly fur um and um yeah thank you ever so much everybody for joining me um and um i'll catch you all next week all right see you later bye